All right, today we want to talk a little bit about uh, cognitive distortion. Cognitive distortion. And uh, remember last week, or the week before last, we talked about being sabotaged. Y'all remember that? Yes. Everybody shout sabotage. Sabotage. <laughs> we as the people of the book, the children of Israel, we have been through a whole lot. Yes. And the nations that are around us have dealt with us very wisely. And we talked about uh, being sabotaged. We talked about how the nations of the earth have sort of come uh, uh, all in harmony and confederacy together to try to hinder us from making certain connections to making a certain associations, keeping us apart so that the Eastern world can't connect with the Western world and the Western world can't connect with the Eastern world and everything has all been uh, done in, a cons in, in, a, in an effort to keep us apart and separated from our, one another. Are y'all hearing that? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So not only have we been sabotaged with, 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 with those types of things, and we talked about COINTELPRO, we talked about uh, the, uh, the memorandum uh, 40, 47, I believe it was 47, uh, 45, one of those memorandums where we talked about extensively about what they said about African, uh, the nation of Africa versus the uh, African Americans in the, in the uh, diaspora, not connecting, not joining forces together. Not only have they done all of those types of things, but they also have caused certain things to happen in our thinking and in our mind and in our function. Now, we need to know and understand that we have been here in America for how long? 400 years, right? We're coming up on the, the 400 year uh, uh, anniversary of us being in the land of our captivity. And what we need to understand and know is that we have experienced serious and severe trauma since we've been there. Yes, mm -hmm. A whole lot of trauma has went on and a whole lot of psychological games and a lot of things have been going on in our minds. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing this? Yes. And, and, and what we have to understand and know is that anybody that has dealt with trauma and has not dealt with their particular trauma like the trauma of the transatlantic slave trade. Somebody said, well, you experienced the transatlantic. That was your ancestors way back then. But the Bible says that the life of the flesh is in the what? Blood. In the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And there's certain genetic things that happen through trauma that gets transformed or translated in the blood. Yes. And it's passed on from generation to generation to generation because the same blood that those of our ancestors had running through their veins is the same blood that we got running through yes. our veins now. Yes. Are y'all hearing that? Yes. So nevertheless, the nations of the earth have dealt wisely with us and they have dealt wisely with our minds. Now we're coming into the knowledge of the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Set you free. Set you free. So when you begin to understand and realize that you have been lied to all your life, you've been lied to, you've been, there's been games that have been played on your mind all your life, and all of a sudden you come to this reality and understanding and start to understand who you were prior to the 400 years of slavery, when you begin to understand your history, your heritage, and understand that, 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 that these, this book, this book called the Holy Bible is actually a historical book. It's a book that actually is talking about the, 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 the children of Israel and the things that they would go through, things they would overcome. Life lessons are all throughout that book. And when you realize those people are actually connected to you and there's some ancestry, there's some history, there's some blood there, we have to know and understand that that's a whole lot to handle and a whole lot to understand and a whole lot to come to truth with or, or understand or grapple with. That's why a lot of times when we tell uh, our brothers and sisters who they are, they have a hard time struggling with the idea that the father 
love them. They have a hard time understanding that the Father has called them out of darkness into it. I, I don't hear what I'm saying. They, they have a hard time processing that they are special above all people. Hallelujah. They, they, they have a hard time understanding and processing this whole idea that they have something that they were called to do that their ancestors didn't do and that caused slavery to happen and, ha and all of the other things that happened to us while we were slaves. So today I want to talk about this whole word or this, this concept of cognitive distortion because there's a whole lot of cognitive distortion going on. And that's part of um, uh, dealing with someone who has dealt with trauma. They go through these cognitive distortions. And we're going to get a very good understanding today. My hope and prayer is that we get a, a very good understanding on how we think and how we process information. All right? It's very important. And that at the end of this, we can learn how to rethink how we think. Are y'all hearing this? Yes, yes, sir. Proverbs 23 and 7, what did it say? For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. In other words, your, the way you think is everything. The way you think is actually you. Yes. Are y'all hearing this? Yes. Every thought, every imagination, every idea, every concept that goes on in your mind, mm -hmm. however you think about it, that's you. Yes. That's what you're going to do. That's what your life is going to be about. That's going to be the way you go. That's going to be what you like. That's going to be what you're going to do and how you're going to function in this world. Yes. As a man thinks in his heart, as you think in your mind, so is he. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be you. Let this mind, because the Most High understands and knows if they have your mind, then they got you too. Right. Because you can't move forward if your mind don't tell you to. Right. You won't get out of the of the of the, the area of neutral. You will stay in a, in, a, in, a, in a place and never move forward if your mind don't give you that right understanding. You can't get the right understanding in your mind and thinking and processing information correctly. Because as you think in your heart, so is you. And it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Right. Yeshua didn't have a mind that kept him stuck in one place. Kept him stuck in a cycle. When I look at our people, when I look at our young people, old people, or whoever, when I look at us, I see people who don't have proper thinking. The reason why your life can't change is because your mind ain't changed. I guess I'm talking to somebody. I'm going to have to preach like I feel today. Come on, baby. See, the reason why you can't go to the next step is because of your mind. Your mind won't let you. You haven't understood certain things. You haven't dealt with certain things in your mind. You haven't come to certain conclusions in your mind. You haven't thought properly. You have not thought properly. All this time, coming in, going to church, going to school, living your life in relationships, but your mind hasn't been functioning the way that the creator intended for it to function. Because of the sabotage, because of what we were born into. And there's a whole lot of cognitive distortions that's happening in our life to cause us not to think properly. But the scripture says, let this mind be in you that was also in Yeshua. Cognitive distortions are simply ways that our mind convinces us 
of something that isn't really true. Isn't it something how all your life you thought Christmas and Santa Claus right. was the thing to do and the thing to understand? Isn't it something that all your life you thought the Easter Bunny and dying eggs was, had something to do with Yeshua dying on allegedly Friday and getting up on Sunday? Mm -hmm. All they got all that mixed in. Nice. And all of those things cause a what? A distortion. A distortion. Because you've been in deceptive, you've been deceived so long to that it's hard for you to come out of that deception. The Hebrew word, nakash, means we've been guided into darkness. Mm -hmm. And because you've been guided in the darkness, ain't nobody came to get you out of the darkness to bring you into the light of truth. But that's what we're here today to do. We're here to lead you by the hand. Out of darkness into the marvelous light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, that's what Satan's job is. His job is to lead you into the darkness and lead you right there. Yes, sir. And you're in the darkness trying to make decisions. You're in the darkness trying to make positive choices. You're in the darkness trying to Finagle your way in the darkness and there's no light around. And the light that I'm talking about is the light of truth. Yeah. To lead you out of this darkness. But that's what we're here to do and speak to you today. We're here to lead you out of this darkness and give you the light of Yahweh's word because Yahweh's word is the truth. Hallelujah. And it's the light that you need that's going to get you out of what you're in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So cognitive distortions are simply ways that our mind convinces us of something that isn't really true. You're in a relationship. Yeah, she, she like me. Yeah, he, he likes me. Well, how do you know that's the truth? Right. Mm. Yeah. Y'all yeah. hear that? Yeah. We gonna talk about it. We're going to talk about, we're going to find out some truth today. Cognitive distortions. These in, in, uh, accurate thoughts are usually used to reinforce negative thinking and emotions. Cognitive distortions. When I talk about this, you're going to you're gonna start identifying yourself and you're going to start identifying a whole lot of other people that you know their thinking is distorted. These thoughts usually reinforce negative thinking and negative feelings. Man, I can never get no break in life. It's always something that happens to me. Every time I make one step forward, I get knocked back by four or five other steps and I'm right back in the same place. I can't get a break. Yeah. Yeah. These negative cognitive distortion, it makes you question, well, where is Yahweh at? If there is a, where is he at? Where was he at when I was being abused? Where was he at when I was going through? Where was he at when my father died? What was he at when my mother did those things to me? Cognitive distortions reinforce negative thinking and it gets your emotions involved to where you believe that these things are true. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. All you see is the gang life, the thug life, being a pimp, that's all you got in your mind. That's all you're going to do. You ain't going to go no further than that. Speak it fast and let them know. Tell them. Watch this. Preach to them. Cognitive distortions tell ourselves things that sound rational, yeah. that sound accurate, but really only serve to keep us feeling bad about ourselves. All these thoughts flood your mind. Has anybody had negative thoughts about yourself? Yes. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. 
you know what, I, I just, I just, I don't make enough money. I'm not tall enough. I'm not white enough. I'm not black enough. I'm not whatever enough. Those are distortions. Cognitive, mind is cognitive. Distort, there's distortions in your mind to make you talk negative about your own self. So instead of you even going to trying to apply for the job, you already have a distorted mind to say, right. they ain't gonna hire me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I might as well not even fill out the application. Right. Yeah. They ain't gonna hire me. Dang. And ain't nobody gonna buy my product if I create something. Ain't nobody even gonna buy it. Mm -hmm. So what's the point of even trying? Y'all see what, what happens in the yeah. mind? Yeah. You disqualify your own self. Cognitive distortions. Genesis 2 and 7. What did it say? And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. And the man became a living soul. This is the creation back over in Better Sheep of how man was created. The Bible says that he scooped us out of the dust of the ground. But even though he scooped us out of the dust of the ground and made our outer shell, which is this body, the body was still laying there without any life in it. Right. The life came in when he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Then that being that he created, that shell he created that was scooped out of the ground, that, that, that image, that body part, when the father breathed, y'all will breathe through the nostrils, the breath of life, all of a sudden, this man that had been created and scooped out of the ground, all of a sudden became a living flesh, soul. a living soul. soul. Everybody say living soul. A living soul. He became a living soul. That's going to be very important for you to know. You are a living soul. Somebody say, I'm a living soul. I'm a living soul. Come on, say, I'm a living soul. I'm a living soul. Each and every one of you are living souls. So man's sum total of everything they think, you are a living soul. Everything you think, your soul, because I got to talk to you about what the soul does. Man is a sum total of everything they think. You are a sum total of everything you, you think. Because man became a living soul. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is it. The soul houses your thinking, which is your thoughts and your ideas. So when he said man is a living soul, in your soul is the, is the, um, the ability to think and the word thinking has to do with thoughts, imaginations, ideas. All of that is in your soul. The, the, being, having the opportunity and the ability to think. Yeah. Not only does the soul houses your thinking, your soul houses your feelings, mm -hmm. your emotions. And also... What's housing, housed within the soul, is your choosing, your decisions. Now, take away thinking, feeling, and choosing. What are you now? <laughs> Nothing but a bunch of blood running through a, through a, through a corpse. Y'all seeing that? Mm -hmm. So, you being a soul, a living soul, your thinking is in your soul. Your feelings are in your soul. And your choosing are in your soul. You take away all of this, what do you add? Nothing. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Why? Because when you think, you feel. When you feel, you make decisions based on how you want. Feel. So, if you have the wrong thoughts, you're going to have the wrong feeling about that thought, and you're going to make a wrong what? 
decision based on the feeling that you believe is happening and going on. Cognitive distortion. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. Does this make any sense to anybody? Yes, it does. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. See, you can't be ignorant of Satan's devices. Satan is our adversary. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling against human beings or people. The real fight we're wrestling against are principalities. We're, we're wrestling against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. We're wrestling other things, but we're not wrestling with each other. And what you have to know is that Satan wants your soul. Anybody ever heard that before? Satan wants your soul? Yes. Well, then now you know why he wants your soul. Because what? Your thinking is in your soul. Your feeling is in your soul. And ultimately, what you choose is in your soul. So your soul is valuable. And your soul is what you are. You a living soul. You are some, man is a sum of his thinking, of his feelings, and his choices. So the apostle here is saying, let Satan should get an advantage of us. How can Satan get an advantage of us? The only way Satan can get an advantage of, of you is if he tries to de deceive your thinking. Because if he can deceive your thinking, your feelings are going to line up with whatever you think. And you're going to choose and make decisions based on wrong thinking, wrong feelings. It's going to lead you to the wrong choice. Y'all yeah. hear this? This is the nuts and bolts. We get down. We, we roll our sleeves up. We weigh down. We weigh in, in, into to, to this book, and it's true. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So what happens is the majority of the people in the world are ignorant of what Satan uses to deceive the entire world. They're ignorant of that fact. They're not looking. All they see, y'all remember the movie Titanic? Yeah. Why did the Titanic sink? Because they didn't put in money. They didn't do something that they put in. Who saw the movie? <laughs> when they were on the Titanic, the cap the, the captain was 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 you know taking care of the ship, you know. And then what did he see up ahead? The iceberg. Oh, An iceberg. Everybody say an iceberg. iceberg. Right. Now he saw the iceberg, and you know what he said in the movie? He said, you know what? We can go around the iceberg. But he didn't realize. He was seeing the top of the iceberg that was above the water. He didn't know that there was a big old part of that iceberg underneath the water. So what he saw was only a part of what the bigger picture was. That's cognitive distortion. Satan only want to show you the distortion so you won't be able to see the bigger picture. Y'all got a bigger picture for your life, but you just stuck with the distortion right. where you can't go forward. Right. I guess I'm preaching to myself. Yeah, that's good. See, that's the problem. We only see the iceberg above the water. And we're looking at the iceberg above the water. But we don't realize the same, uh, uh, the, the iceberg below the water mm -hmm. is wider than that. Right. And it's deeper than that. Yeah. So he tried, he saw the little iceberg, it was like this, you know, so he said, oh, I can go around and be like here. But he didn't realize the iceberg underneath the water was over there too. Yeah. Are y'all hearing this? Yes. See, that's what Satan does. He shows you the iceberg yeah. on top of the water. And he want to keep you ignorant of the iceberg below the water. Yeah. And what's below the behavior that we see is something insidious. What's below the, 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 the iceberg in the water is something demonstrious. 
Something that wants to, that's going to be the thing that's going to cause your boat to crack and to sink. But if you don't know that there's a big piece of ice underneath there, if you don't know, if you're ignorant of his devices, you will never see it coming. So he was still, thought he was away from the iceberg and driving right headlong right into it. And it ended up crashing or cracking the boat and water came on the Titanic and the Titanic, what? Sunk. See, Satan wants to get enough water on your boat so it can sink and go under. Because he only comes to do three things. To kill, to steal, and to what? Destroy. But that's why the Bible says this is why the Son of Man had to be made manifest. Had to be seen right along with that iceberg. Because the Son of Man, when he's seen or manifested, he's going to come and he's going to destroy the works of the death. So I must be a son of y'all coming to destroy the works of the death because I'm making known to you the devices that you've been ignorant about. And the devices that you've been ignorant about is the cognitive distortions that you continue on believing. What a word, boy. Hallelujah. See, you keep believing what the devil wants you to believe. Right. You keep believing, you fall in right in his hands. Mm -hmm. I got him again. Mm -hmm. They ain't gonna even try to do nothing. Because I got them so jacked up right. with cognitive distortions that they won't even try. They won't dare raise their head up. Mm -hmm. They won't dare come out of this. They won't dare turn themselves around and get their mind renewed enough so that they can know the truth. Because as long as you stay in the lie, mm -hmm. it's the lie that binds, right. but it's the truth that sets free. Hallelujah. You shall know the truth, and it shall make you free. So it has to be the lie that's been binding us and not making us free all this time. Right. I guess y'all don't want to preach. They all want me to preach today. Y'all yes. 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 ready for me to close now? No. no. So the battleground is the what? Y'all got to shout that. The battleground is the what? The mind. See, that's all a part of it too. See, the devil got your mind so jacked up, you can't even repeat what the preacher's saying. <laughs> you looking at it, but when you say it, something is happening. Yes. You don't realize it because you're ignorant of the Satan's devices. Right. He don't want you to say nothing. I'm, he don't want you to repeat nothing I'm saying. But when you say it, that's what it's going to get into your hearing. Yes. Yes. Faith comes by hearing. It don't come just by you hearing me talk. Right. It comes when you start talking to yourself. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. I just said something huge. Faith don't come just by hearing me talk. Right. Faith comes when you start talking. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not talking anything, but talking what the word of y'all saying. Yes. Yes. When you say it, there's power. When you say it, it's, it's power when I say it to myself. Yes. But it's even more powerful when you start saying it. Yes. Not only when you start saying it, but when you start doing it. Y'all yes. Hallelujah. hearing this? Yes. So the battleground is the what? Mind. The battleground is the mind. That's what Satan, he, he, he said, I'm going to get their mind. If I can get their mind. If I can get their mind, I'll get their feelings, and I'll get them to choose me over and over and over and over and over again. And it'll be a cycle in their life that I'll never be able to break because they don't understand the secret. They don't understand the game. They don't understand the system. Revelations 2 and 9. Let me prove it to you. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. So this is letting you know that this great dragon was cast out. The old serpent called the devil, mm -hmm. and Satan, which did what? Deceived. Some of the world. All of the world. Only the part of the world. The whole, the whole world. world. Only the white people. The whole, the whole world. world. Only the, the Spanish people. 
Only the Negroes. The whole world. Now, this Satan, the devil, he has deceived the whole world. Yes. Deceived, deceived the whole world. Nakash guided the whole world into darkness. Mm -hmm. And got us sitting in darkness. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good word, preacher. Good word. And got us just looking at the distortions. Thinking that that's what it is, and that ain't what it is. It's a distortion. Yeah. What did he do? He was cast out. He was cast out where? Into the earth. No, he was cast out to the lake of fire. Into the earth. He was cast out to hell. How many people heard that the devil's in hell? Yes. Mm -hmm. He ain't in hell. He was cast out into to the what? Earth. The earth. Yeah. Come on. And who else was cast out with him? And the angels was cast out with him. And the ones that was rolling with him, they were cast out too. So that means they were all deceivers. Cast out right along with Satan. Come on. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. So because they were cast out of the heavens, he told the whole heavenly host, y'all can now rejoice. Woo! We can rejoice because we didn't kicked out Satan and his angels. In other words, there wasn't going to be no more deception going on in the heavenlies no more. But look at what he said. But woe to the inhabitants of who? Of the earth. And what else? And of the sea. It's a woe. It's a woe. It's a uh oh. Y'all, uh oh. Ooh. Look out. <laughs> Look out. Oh, my, my, my. Ooh. Ooh. It's a woe to everybody that's going to be a habiter on the earth and the sea. Come on. For the devil has come down. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. He's yes. come down unto you having great wrath. Why do you think he got great wrath for? He's upset that he was kicked out. So he got great wrath because he knows what? That he has but a short time. No. The reason why he has great wrath is that was the reason. Because he knows he has what kind of a time? Short time. That's why he's coming down with great wrath. Because he don't have a long time to continue on functioning in deception forever. So his deception has an expiration date on it. Hallelujah. Everybody say short time. Short time. Well, what's the short time? Well, my Bible tells me in Genesis chapter 2, and I got that on my song, the Sabbath Saint song. It says that Yah created the heavens and the earth in six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. From all the work that he had made. Yeah. So how many, how much time does Satan have? He had 6,000 years mm -hmm. to do everything he was going to do. He had six days to do his work. Mm -hmm. And guess where we are on his time clock? We're entering into the seventh day. We're entering into the seventh day. Mm -hmm. That's why all these people are waking up to truth. Yeah. All of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Six days we were to work. Yeah. And the seventh day we're supposed to rest. Yes. Don't the Bible say that one day with Yah is as a thousand years? Yes. And a thousand years as what? One day? Yes. So he gave us six days. He gave Satan six thousand years to do mm -hmm. what and he came down because he said, man, that's a short time. <laughs> but we're transitioning now into the seventh day. Yes. Where the kingdoms of this world is about to become the kingdoms of our Yah and his Christ. Yes. And he's getting ready to reign forever and ever. Mm -hmm. 
that's a prophetic word. That maybe that went over your head. You ain't ready for the king of kings to come on back and, and establish his kingdom. But I'm telling you, we're in the midst of all of that. Praise God. Are y'all hearing that? God. God didn't wake you up for no reason. He didn't give you all this truth for no reason. No, a kingdom is coming. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. That's going to happen. Whether you believe it, understand it, know about it or not. His kingdom is going to reign forever. And all of those that love righteousness, all of the, those that love his appearing are going to be in that kingdom. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 We're ready for the shift. Hallelujah. The shift is, on, is, is among us. So he's having great wrath because he knows I ain't got enough time. Uh -huh. My time is almost over. These people are waking up to truth. Mm -hmm. They connect and they're understanding mm -hmm. the lies of deception that I had them bound with for so long. I'm, I'm losing my grip. Yes. I'm losing my grip. I can't, I can't hold them in deception. I can't hold them in darkness. I, I'm, I'm, they keep sliding. They're sliding. I, I'm, trying, I'm losing my, my grip on them. Yes. There's too much truth all over the place. Didn't the Father say that truth would start springing up? Yes. That's what's going on. Truth is springing up. People don't want to be deceived. People are learning the truth. Wow. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's how you know the kingdom trumpets are starting to sound. Where truth, where truth is coming in. Mm -hmm. Understanding is coming in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The kingdom of Yah. Not too far off from that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Peter 5 and 8, what does it say? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary is the devil, as they were lying, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. This is why Apostle Peter told us. He said, man, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, he's walking, he walketh about. Walking about. Walking about. See, who's still under deception? Who's still under deception? Well, man, they under, let me give some cognitive distortion. So let them begin to not to see themselves like the Father wants them. And let me keep them in this dark. Let me keep them, you know, keep all this in. So they begin to be focused on my hand. Just focus. Focus on what I'm doing right here. Don't, don't focus on the word. Don't focus on truth. Right. Just keep being deceived. These are some of the cognitive errors. Magnification and minimization. What that means is exaggerating or minimizing the importance of events. One might believe their own achievements are unimportant or that their mistakes are excessively important. Anybody here ever made a mistake before? Lift your hand. Yeah. You made a mistake? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever focused on your mistake so long where you couldn't get no, no kind of relief from it? You kept on focusing on, man, I just made a, I just made a mistake. Oh, I wish I wouldn't have. I don't even need to live no more. I, don't, I just need to die because I made a mistake. So you excessively make what you did, the mistake, excessively important while you minimize the things that you have achieved to get to this point. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't do that. Well, I just did a little something. Well, you know, ain't no big deal. Ain't no big deal about what I did or, right. or how I took some initiative. Y'all hearing that? Mm -hmm. That's part of some cognitive errors. Minimizing and magnifying. Catastrophizing, making everything catastrophic in your life, seeing only the worst possible outcome of every situation. If I, y'all know, somebody, I know y'all know somebody like that. All they do is see the worst thing yeah. in every situation. Yeah. Man, the house is on fire. No, it's just smoke in the kitchen. But you saying the whole house is on fire? Get out! <laughs> you making it bigger? Than what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. You got a little pain in your elbow, but oh, my whole body. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Everything hurts. 
all the way down to my toenail. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Seeing the worst possible outcome, they're going to take us. Yeah. They're going to handcuff us. Oh, it ain't going to be pretty. Making it something catastrophic. Yeah. That's part of cognitive errors. Over generalization, making broad interpretations for a single or a few events. I felt awkward during my interview. I am always awkward. Now nah, you really awkward all the time. <laughs> no. Man, I get a dumb answer. I get a dumb answer. Boy, I'm just dumb all the time. No, no. <laughs> Man, I made one mistake. Man, I'm stupid. Man, I'm always stupid, man. It's stupid. Now you hit yourself. Stupid, man. Y'all hear somebody just beat up on themselves? Yeah. Oh, man, you're just so stupid. It's just man, you shouldn't have. Y'all back there laughing. Y'all must know somebody. <laughs> Overs generalization. Magic, magical thinking. Another cognitive error. The belief that acts. Uh, the belief that acts uh, will influence unrelated situations. I am a good person. Bad things shouldn't happen to me because I'm good. I don't do nothing wrong. I got it going on. Everything I touch turn to gold. Therefore, goodness is only going to be in my life only. And that's the way I'm going to think all the time about every situation, everything. They call that magical thinking. That nothing ever bad is supposed to happen to you. Cognitive distortions. Personalization. Personalization is another. The belief that one is responsible for events outside of their own control. Oh, no. My mom is always upset. She should be fine if I did more to help her. My mom is always upset, and it's because of me. If I didn't do nothing, if I could have did a little bit more, then maybe she wouldn't be so upset. Mm. Making everything about you personally. Take it on. They talk about putting more on you than what you're able to bear. You're just putting extra burdens on yourself. Is this speaking to somebody in here? Yes. Jumping to conclusions. Interpreting the meaning of a situation with little or no evidence. You know what? Them folks back there, they don't like my preaching. They looking at me and laughing. So that means they don't like my preaching. They don't like, I know, I know you don't like me. <laughs> I saw the way you did like this. <coughs> yeah, that means you didn't like me. I saw the way you blew your nose. That means you didn't like me. Jump to conclusions. Y'all know somebody that jumped to conclusions? Yes. You ever do that personally? Jump to conclusions? You know what they talking about me? Yeah. Oh, they doing me wrong. They don't like me. They don't like me. They talking about me. They always got something negative to say. Well, did they say something? No, but they looking at me. Right. I was literally driving down the street in Chicago, and some people across the street looked at me like this. Like, what's up? What you, what you want to do? They were, saying, they were telling me what I want to do. And I'm like, why are they doing that looking at me? Now, what if I would took it the wrong way, right? right. Oh, let me tell you what I'm going to do then. Well, that was up. Now we got a fight on our hand, right? Literally, I was driving down the street and I blew the horn at the car in front of me because the light was green. And the people thought that I was talking, blowing a horn at them. They jumped to the conclusion. I wasn't even thinking about them. Know somebody like that? Yeah. That's a cognitive distortion. Now you get the word for it. Mind reading. Interpreting the thoughts and beliefs of others without adequate evidence. She would not go on a date with me. She probably thinks I'm ugly. 
because she didn't want to go on a date. She probably think I'm ugly. Mind reading. You reading people's minds. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You don't know what nobody's thinking. No, you don't. This is a good word? Yes, it is. Thank you, Pastor Boy. Yes. yes. Cognitive distortion. Mine is just distorted. Fortune telling. The expectations that a situation will turn out badly without adequate evidence. Man, we all in this room, man. This can't be good. This can't be good for all of us to be at this place all together. Something bad going to happen. To something, I got a feeling something bad is going to happen. We got to get out of here. But we got to get out of here, man. There's too many of us in here. <laughs> Fortune teller. These are how people think. But they're cognitive distortions. Man, so I, don't, I just got a bad feeling, man. We should be in here like this, all of us together, man. Something bad going to happen. Cognitive distortions. Look at this. Y'all tell me which cognitive distortion is being used. This guy is thinking, how am I going to tell my boss that my project will pass the deadline? So he's thinking about that, and they're two together. This is what she's thinking. He hasn't spoken in two minutes, oh my God, he hates me, and, and will he split up with me tomorrow? <laughs> so what kind of cognitive, oh, the ones we just went over, what, what is she doing? Jumping Jump to Jump conclusion. <laughs> Magnifying the situation, ain't you? But what is he thinking about? How am I going to tell my boss that my project will pass the deadline. And she said, man, this guy ain't spoke to me in two minutes. In two minutes. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, he gonna, he gonna speak up with me. He don't wanna talk to me. He don't wanna be with me. <laughs> That's a cognitive distortion, eh? Which yeah. one is it, though? Mind reads, you trying to read his mind? Yeah. See, a lot of times people read your body language. See, I read your body language. You did your arms like this, so that means you don't, you're not into what, what I'm talking about. And that could be true. You might not be interested in what the, But it's that whole cognitive distortion, but you don't really know. You don't have enough evidence to make that assumption. Emotional reasoning. Emotional reasoning. Because again, the Satan puts thoughts in your mind, and then he tries to get you to feel a certain way about the thought. And every thought, you're going to have a feeling with it. And he's going to keep putting thoughts in your mind until you have the right feeling that he wants you to have about whatever the situation is. So emotional reasoning. The assumptions that emotions reflect the way, uh, the way things really are. I feel like a bad friend. Therefore, I must be a bad friend because that's the way I feel. I feel like, you know, this place of the ark is just too much confusion. So because I feel that way, I guess my feeling must be right. I feel uncomfortable. So because I feel uncomfortable, that must be right, my feeling. Y'all hearing that? Yes. But all it is is a cognitive distortion. I'm preaching better than y'all saying hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Disqualifying the positive. Recognizing only the negative aspect of situations while ignoring the positive. You might receive many compliments, but you only focus on the single piece of negative feedback that you got. So I can say all day long, hey, that's a nice outfit. You did a great job on that project or that assignment. But, you know, next time, can you, whatever, whatever the negative is. But if you could only, next time, you know, if you could have uh, uh, typed down another page, if you could only gave me three more paragraphs, instead of you focusing on the positive things that I did say, 
You only focus on the negative thing I say. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you disqualify. He just only telling me that to just make me feel good. Ain't only saying that because he wants something from me. Yeah. Positive distortions. Disqualifying the positive. Only focus on the negative. Should statements. The belief that things should be a certain way. I should always be friendly. I should always be like this. I should always do this. I, I should always. Should statements. This is what you should have done. You've heard that before, you did something in a situation and somebody tried to correct you and they all they focus on, man, this is what you should have done. This is the way you should have did it. This is how you should have done. You should have said this. You should have. You should have walked over there and did it this way. And if you would have smiled, then you wouldn't have got that response. If you'd have been there on time, if you'd have got out the bed when I called you the first time, yeah, yeah. But you laid there, and you laid there, and you laid there. <laughs> Y'all hear that? Uh-oh, somebody identified somebody. All or nothing thinking. Y'all heard somebody? All or nothing thinking. Thinking is absolutely such as always, never, or ever. I never do a good enough job on anything. I never get the answer right. I ain't never worn nothing before. I ain't never. Y'all hear people talking like that? Yeah. Yes. It's all or nothing. All or nothing. That's a cognitive distortion, a cognitive error in how you're thinking. And we have to change that. Let me show y'all this video. And I want y'all to see the cognitive distortions in the way this man is thinking. Y'all gonna hear it. Y'all gonna see the cognitive distortions. Watch this. Excuse me. We have a no yelling policy. 
to see if these babies. <laughs> Excuse me. Am I talking to you, Pinhead? Am I? Please don't call me Pinhead. <laughs> I'm losing it. You took you to Rageaholics. Why? Probably because this whole universe is against me. <laughs> And now they want me to bottle it up. It makes me so mad! What are you up there? Your daddy's bad. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got some discipline. He just got really bad. But that's not only him. Right. I hope that you was able to see yourself in that too. Yeah. Because we got a whole lot of cognitive distortions mm -hmm. that are causing us to stay where we are, and we can't move forward until we deal with the way we think. Right. Because as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Three types of thinking errors. Type one is an unwilling to accept responsibility. Everything is not your fault. No. See, that's, that's a thinking error. Saying everything ain't my fault, it ain't my fault, it ain't my fault. Type two is a self-defeating attitude and mindset. I can't. I can't. Mm -hmm. It hampers your personal growth and self-esteem. The first one doesn't allow you to be accountable when you're unwilling to accept responsibilities, number one. And number two, a self-defeating spirit. I can't. Mindset. I can't. And then the third is a narcissistic type of a mindset where all you focus on is me, me, me. Focus on myself without thinking of others. It's all about you. You know how to turn every argument around to make it be about what you didn't like. Can you see yourself unwilling to accept responsibility? You refuse to accept any responsibility for your actions. It's not always, the answer is always, it ain't my fault. Number two, self-defeating. I can't. Why don't you try? I know I can't. Mm -hmm. Have you tried? No, I just can't. Mm -hmm. Or narcissistic. Third type of error thinking is me, 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 me. And everything is about me. So we must rethink the way we think. We must rethink the way we think. Everybody say that. We must rethink the way we think. Say it again. We must rethink the way we think. And I say I must rethink the way I think. I must rethink the way I think. Say it again. I must rethink the way I think. Say it again. I must rethink the way I think. You got to. You got to rethink the way you think. Mm -hmm. I'm almost finished. Proverbs 6 and 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So this letting you know that the commandment is the lamp. Remember Nakash being guided into darkness. So if you're in the darkness, the only thing that's going to get you out of the darkness doesn't going to have to be a commandment because commandment is the lamp and the law is the light mm -hmm. to help you to see your way out of the darkness that Satan has brought you into. He's brought you, led you, guided you into darkness and left you in darkness. So now the commandment, which is the lamp, and the law, which is the light, has to come in and begin to show some light on your situation so you can find a way out. And reproof of instructions are a way of life. Because in here, you're going to be reproved, you're going to be corrected, and you're going to be rebuked. We see some behavior and some things that you're slipping on and ain't going the right way, and it comes back, and we find out about it, know about it, and we can clearly see it's evident on your life, you're going to be reproved, you're going to be rebuked, and you're going to be corrected whether you like it or not. Y'all hear it? Yeah. Because instructions are what? A way of life. I was, I remember being a young man, and I used to hate, hate it to be correct. When I was a 
young man, 16, 17. Didn't want nobody telling me something. Man. Until I made a mistake and said, well, why didn't nobody tell me? <laughs> yes, they do. I didn't know. See? Then once I understood, oh, man, instructions are a good thing. That could have saved me that pitfall. That could have saved me that extra money. Instructions are a way of life. And I love to embrace instructions, especially from people who are wise. That's it. Not from people who are trying to control you and manipulate you and to make you do something they want you to do. Mm. Y'all hearing that? Yes. Now, I ain't talking about that kind of advice. They can save that advice for themselves. I'm looking for the advice that's going to lead me into life and not death. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 119 and 9. What does it say? Wherewithal shall a young man put his way? How can a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. By taking heed to the word of Yah. To taking heed to what the book is saying. To taking heed. For somebody who's wise and, and skilled in the word of truth can give and present to you. That's how a young man is going to be able to cleanse his ways. And we have a lot of young men in here. The only way your way is going to be cleansed is that you begin to take heed. You listen. You consider. You reflect. Then you do. You got to do. Don't forget to do. Don't just reflect and meditate and ponder. No. After you do all of that, then you need to do what the book or the word that you're getting is giving you. You need to go do that. That's how you're going to cleanse your way. Proverbs 4 and 2. For I give you good doctrine. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Forsake ye not my law. Father's given us something good. Yes. And that's the truth. That's Torah. Yes. The pointing in the direction. That's what the Torah is. It points in the direction that you're supposed to go. Hallelujah. It don't whip you in the direction. No. It's not forcing you to move in the direction. No. But it's gently pointing you in the way. Hallelujah. In the way of righteousness. Yes the way of holiness, in the way of faithfulness, yes. in the way of justice. Y'all yes. hear that? Yes. <clears throat> it's not trying to whip you and make you and ball its fists up at you and pop at you to make you try to, no, Torah don't operate like that. Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Mm -hmm. He's going to lead you, point, guide you, suggest things. This is the way. This is the way. Just look at this. Look, look over there. That's the way. That's the direction you need to go. But you got to get some quietness in your life and some quietness in your thinking to be able to hear. Yes, got to hear. Remember Elijah? Elijah was dealing with depression, but he just kept through having a great victory. But nevertheless, he was in a cave. And the Bible says there was a great earthquake. But Yah wasn't in the earthquake. Then there was a big fire. But Yah wasn't in the fire. Mm -hmm. Then there was a loud sound of wind. But Yah wasn't in the wind. But he was in the still small voice. That's how the Father comes up. He shows up in the stillness, in the small voice, leading you, directing you. But because everything is loud in your life, you can't hear the still, small voice. Mm -hmm. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 8 and 32. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world. And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed. But be ye transformed. This is how you rethink it. What, how you think by not conforming to the word but being transformed 
By the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is that good. That you may prove. That's something you got to prove. This is what you got to prove. You got to prove what is what? Good. You got to prove what is acceptable. Yeah. And you have to prove what is the perfect will of Yah. Mm -hmm. And the only way you're going to be able to know what's good, acceptable, and perfect, you have to be transformed and renewed. Your mind has to be renewed. You can't focus on the distortion. But you got to rethink all of that. You got to be transformed. And your mind has to be renewed. 2 Corinthians 10 4. Close with this. For the weapons of our warfare. For the weapons of our warfare. Are not carnal. Are not carnal. But mighty through God. But they're mighty through Yah. Come on. To the pulling down of strongholds. To the pulling down of strongholds. In other words, you got to know that the weapons that the Father has given you to fight with, they are not carnal, natural weapons. They're not a butter knife. They're not a machete. They're not a gun or a pistol. The weapons that he has given you, they're not carnal weapons. They're not guns and bombs and bullets. Those are not the weapons that the Father has given us to fight with. He said, but the weapons that he has given us, they are mighty weapons. In other words, they're stronger than bombs and bullets and guns. They're mighty through him. Woo-wee! Well, how can a gun not be mighty, man? Well, those are carnal weapons. He said, man, I ain't giving you them weapons to fight with. I've given you weapons that are mighty through me that they're going to be have the ability, they're going to demonstrate the ability to pull down strongholds. Oh, yeah. Notice the direction. Pulling down strongholds. In other words, the battleground is where? Your mind. The mind. And in your mind, your thoughts that Satan sends to you, puts in your mind, have become strongholds in your mind to where you can't think about nothing else. But the Bible said if you use his weapons that are mighty through him, you're going to be able to pull down them strongholds of all the stuff we've been talking about, the cognitive distortions that are working and operating in your mind. But they're only mighty through Yah. Remember I told you, you can't take a pill to heal what's wrong in your soul. You can't take Excedrin to fix what's wrong in your soul. You can't take NyQuil to fix what's wrong in your soul because those things are natural. And what's going on with you is internal. It's something else, spiritual. The Bible says those things have to be dealt with. You got to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. Hallelujah. So he said they're mighty through y'all to the pulling down of strongholds. And then what he said? Casting down. See, you got to cast down. See, the imaginations are where? Up high. Your mind is the highest thing on your body. Your mind. Everybody touch your mind and say, my mind is the highest thing on my body. My mind is the highest thing on my body. And he's telling you that there's thoughts that's way up high that need to be cast down. Brought down, casting down imaginations. Come on. And every high thing. And every high thing. Come on. That exalts itself. That exalts itself. Look at what it's exalting itself in. Right. Against the knowledge that you know about Yah. You got to begin to cast down the very images and imaginations that we just went over because those images and those distortions and those high things in your mind is trying to exalt itself up against the knowledge of Yah. It's trying to it's time to tell Yah's knowledge sit down Yah's knowledge because our knowledge is greater than yours. It's it's it's, it's coming up on the knowledge that you know about the most high. And he says those thoughts and those high things that's trying to raise up on Yah's knowledge, you got to bring them down. Right. Yeah. Somebody say, I got to cast them down. I got to cast them down. So if you already know and understand that, man, if you got a self-defeated attitude, 
and you're defeating your own self through your own thoughts and mind, and you keep saying, I can't do it, I can't do it, that's a knowledge that's coming from somewhere that's making you feel like you can't do it. And that's the very thoughts that you have to begin to cast down by saying, no, I take authority over this attitude and this thought and this mindset and I cast it down. This is not what the book told me. The book told me that I can do all things through Christ that gives me this victory. But this thought in my mind, so you got to confront the thought. You got to confront the thought. And sometimes you got to be loud to confront it. You got to hear your, your voice. You can't do it. You can't fight thoughts with thoughts. Right. I know y'all y'all have done that before. You keep thinking negative, and you're sitting there thinking negative, and this is what some of you do. <laughs> and and you, you fight thought with thought. Yeah. You're just fighting in your mind. Ain't nothing happening. The thought is still down. You got a lustful thought in your mind, and you're trying to think about something else. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. you think about basketball. You think about football. You think about something else. Anything but that thought. Let me think about something else. And you fight thought against thought. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The thought ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. You know why it ain't going nowhere? Because you're not casting it down. The only way to cast it down is you got to use your, your mouth and your voice. Your voice has to be heard in your hearing. Because faith comes by hearing. So you got to say, no, thought of lust. I take authority over you. This thought of being self-defeating, I take authority over you, and I cast you down in the name of Yahshua, Hamashiach. Y'all hear it? Come on, let's practice that. Okay. Say self-defeating thoughts. Self-defeating thoughts. In the name of Yahshua. In the name of Yahshua. I cast you down. I cast you down. What was that hard? No. Thought of stress. Thought of stress. I cast you down. I cast you down. In the name of Yeshua. In the name of Yeshua. Thought of anger. Thought of anger. I keep getting angry. I keep getting angry. I got these thoughts of anger in my mind. I got these thoughts of anger in my mind. I cast them down. I cast them down. In the name of Yeshua. In the name of Yeshua. And then if it keeps on playing with you. Say it again. In the name of Yahshua, I cast this thought down. In the name, I cast down this. And all of a sudden, you'll find yourself not even thinking about it no more. Right. Because now you didn't chose to have an offensive weapon right. against Satan. Because all you're going to do is keep putting thoughts in your mind. Right. This thought ain't going nowhere. I'm going to throw it to you again. No, I cast you down. And, and you got to hear yourself say it. Yes. You got to open up your mouth and hear yourself say it. You can't do it in your mind. You got to do it with your voice. Bringing into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. Every thought of anger, every thought of defeat, every negative thought, all the cognitive distortions that's in my mind, I bring every last one of you thoughts in my mind into obedience to Christ right now. In the name of Yahshua, I command those thoughts to obey what the words say. Now, and the, and the thoughts keep coming through your mind, you keep saying it until you get the victory. Y'all yes. hearing that? Yes. And then quote the scripture. Quote the verse. I'm going to cast down these imaginations. I'm going to cast down every hot thing. And you got to hear your voice and say it. The last part of that is having a readiness. Read. And having and a readiness to revenge all this. You got to have a readiness to revenge all disobedient thoughts. When your obedience is fulfilled. When your obedience is fulfilled. So in other words, you can't expect the thoughts to obey you if you're not going to obey Yah and obey what the Father is telling you to do. You cast the thought down by using your voice. And you may have to go get away from people. Hold on. Yeah. Give, give, me, give yeah. me about five minutes. I got to go cast this thought down. That keeps flooding my mind. I gotta go take a little time away from everybody. I gotta go to the stall. You at work, and, and I gotta cast this thought down. I gotta go outside for a minute. You just see the guys taking them smoke breaks outside. Well, I gotta go take a casting down this thought break. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta cast this thought down because I got my voice has to be heard 
So these thoughts in my mind can hear my voice saying, come down. Y'all hearing that? Yes. Sounds kind of kind of different, don't it? Yes. But I guarantee it works. I guarantee it works. I've been doing it for, for all my life, and I know it works. I've been doing it for a very long time. All right, last scripture, we close, last verse, we close with this. Philippians 4 and 8, what did it say? Finally, brother. So after you cast down the thought, that means you can't go back trying to entertain that same thought. Right. That means if you're watching pornography and you just cast the thought of pornography down because now it's, it's in alignment, it's, in, it's been brought down out of your mind, you can't go back and look at pornography and entertain that again because guess what's going to happen? Those same thoughts and feelings are going to come right back. Y'all hear this? Yes. This is how you have to think. Finally, brother, come on. Whatsoever things are true. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are what? True. Come on. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things that are honest. Come on. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are just. Come on. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are pure. So the first four things says, think on things that are only true. Think on things that are honest. Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. Everybody say true, true. Honest, honest, just, just. Pure. pure, pure. Come on. Whatsoever things are lovely. Lovely, come on. Whatsoever things are good. Good. If there be any. Uh huh. Whatsoever things are of a good report. Good report, come on. If there be any virtue. If there be any virtue. And if there be any praise. And if there be any praise. Think on these things. Think on these things. So again, he wants you to think on things that are true, things that are honest. Do y'all got any true thoughts to think about? Anything yes. that's the truth? Yeah, yes. Okay, his word is the truth. You got anything to think about that's honest? Yes. That's truly honest? Yes. You got anything that you can think about that is for justice and for righteousness? Huh? Yes. What about things that are pure? What about things that are lovely yes. and of a good report? Yes. He says, think on those things. That's how you think. So, let's do a quick test. If I think on things that are true and think on things that are honest and think on things that are just and think on things that are pure, what am I going to, what's my feelings going to be like? Good. They're going to be good. It's going to be everything I'm thinking. Yes. I'm going to start feeling true. I'm going to start feeling honest. Yes. I'm going to start feeling just. Yes. I'm going to start feeling pure. I'm going to start feeling lovely. And I'm going to start feeling good. Mm -hmm. Because now I've changed my thinking. I'm thinking like the book told me to think. I'm focusing on those areas. And now I'm making choices and decisions that are true. I'm making choices and decisions that are honest. Remember, thinking, feelings, and choosing. So when you think on things that are true, you start feeling the things that are true in your spirit, in your emotions, and then you start doing the things that are true. You start doing the things that are honest. You start doing the things that are jets, the things that are pure, and the things that are lovely, and the things that have a good report. You start doing what you think, because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Somebody, somebody.